Teresa dusted, trying to get into the hardest to reach places. She loved when the house was crystal clean and tried to maintain it, cleaning the apartment almost every day. How many times her husband Fraser suggested her to hire someone to keep the house clean, but Teresa was against it. Why do we need a stranger in the house? She asked her husband. I'm perfectly capable of doing everything myself. I like to do the housework. I guess I was born to do it. Born to be a housewife, snorted Fraser. That doesn't sound very positive. But Teresa didn't think so. She was glad that she had the opportunity to take care of her home, raise her children, and generally benefit her significant others. It was because of Teresa's refusal to work that Fraser was able to do business, travel to different cities, and not have to worry about the children not being fed at home and his parents being left without proper care and supervision. Teresa carried all of the household chores and problems on her shoulders, giving all of herself to the care of her loved ones. She liked to get up at dawn to prepare a hearty breakfast for Fraser and the children. Their daughter was 14 and their son 11, and they required a lot of attention and supervision. Fraser's parents, as well as Teresa's parents, also needed care and attention. And Teresa visited them every weekend, bringing food and medicine, helping with cleaning and cooking. Teresa, if we hadn't got you, I don't know how we would have lived, said a satisfied mother-in-law to Teresa. My own daughter doesn't take care of me the way you do. She has completely forgotten us. Fraser is always busy at work, but you have taken care of all our problems. I'm happy to take care of you, answered Teresa with a smile, smoothing a clean tablecloth on the table. She got a lot of pleasure and satisfaction from keeping not only her own house, but also her and Fraser's parents' house clean and comfortable. The bedclothes were always fresh, towels were clean and fragrant, shirts were ironed, and there was not a millimetre of dust on the furniture or household appliances. Only Teresa's mother, Helen, sometimes advised her to spend more time on herself than on cleaning. Did you get an education for nothing? We spent so much effort to get you into college and all you do is cooking and cleaning. Your husband and children and in-laws accustomed that they do not have to do anything because the magician Teresa will come and clean and iron everything. Mom, you know that I never wanted to be a lawyer, replied Teresa. I dislike to dig through papers. I prefer to maintain the order and please the people I love. But Helen was impossible to change her mind. The 60-year-old woman, who had worked all her life as an accountant, thought her daughter's pleasure in taking care of others was silly and pointless. Do you think I'm wrong? When the children grow up and go to live with their families, you will still be a maid for them too? You could have been a lawyer, doing good for society. I'm not a maid, objected Teresa offensively. I don't work for other people. I only take care of my loved ones. That's different. And I do useful things. Just not to the whole society, but to my own kindred. And to you, Mom among others. I don't ask you to take care of me, said her mother. I can handle everything myself, but you still come and do it for me without asking me if I want it. You're imposing your care, Teresa. After these conversations, Teresa almost wanted to resent her mother and no longer come to her. But after a few days, Teresa calmed down and kept helping, periodically listening to her mother's displeasure. Fraser never once expressed dissatisfaction with his wife for not working. He was content for her to stay at home, take care of household chores, and keep the lives of his children and parents under control. It must have been easier for the man, because although it seemed that Teresa was doing work that was invisible to others, without her labour there would hardly be such peace and comfort in the family. One day, Teresa found in the pocket of her husband's jacket two tickets to the theatre. At first, she was glad that Fraser finally decided to go out with her, because she did not even remember when they went somewhere together. And here were tickets to the theatre, and even 
for a performance with her favourite actors. Teresa pretended that she did not find the tickets. She was waiting for Fraser to surprise her. But the gift never came. Then Teresa decided that perhaps these tickets were bought by Fraser for a friend or colleague at their request. However, on the day of the performance, the husband said he had to work late and Teresa pretended to believe him. After tickets to the theatre, Teresa found a cheque from a flower store in her oblivious husband's pocket, then a gift certificate to a beauty salon and massage parlour. Teresa refused to believe, to the last, that her husband had been with another woman, but she couldn't turn a blind eye for too long. Teresa, we need to talk, said Fraser once in the evening, coming back after an alleged business meeting. The thing is, I want a divorce. It was like a bowl of ice water was poured on Teresa. She tensed like a string and felt how quickly her heart started beating in her chest. Teresa didn't want changes in her life at all, but they were already nipping at her heels, breathing down her back and telling her that nothing would ever be the same again. Divorce? But why? Fraser loosened the tie around his neck, sipped greedily from the glass of water, and looked at his wife. Can't you guess why? Do you remember the last time you and I were close? Teresa remembered that night perfectly. It was almost three months ago. Long ago, of course. But Fraser was always so tired at work. You have another woman. Why is she better than me? Fraser grimaced as if he'd tasted chilli pepper. Teresa, she's not better than you. She's different. What do you mean, different? Young, slender, passionate, continued to interrogate Teresa. No, she's not younger than you. Her figure is ordinary, but I always have something to talk to her about and something to be quiet about. I feel good with her. I'm not bored with her. I can't live with you anymore. We've become strangers. All you do is clean up and cook. You've turned into some kind of cook to me, with whom I have nothing to discuss except the menu for the next day. It was more than clear for Teresa. Her rival was active and socialised. Teresa was her complete opposite. What do we tell the children? asked Teresa coldly. Or should I be the one to leave? No, you shouldn't. Fraser tried to smile, but it came out pathetically. You will stay in our apartment with the children. I will help you. But Teresa, you'll have to find a job because I'm not going to provide for you. You've already spent too much time sitting at home doing nothing. Doing nothing, repeated Teresa after him in a kind of lifeless voice. Now she was just a person to Fraser who lived off him and did nothing. A week went by. The children quickly understood everything. They were old enough to believe the fairy tale that their father had temporarily moved somewhere to work in peace. They discussed aloud the fact that Daddy had found another woman, while Teresa fought with herself not to fall into the deepest depression. That's when her own mother came to her rescue. Why are you sitting there suffering? You've got savings. Start your own business. Which business, Mum? asked Teresa tiredly. I don't have a business plan or any good ideas. So I'll give one to you, replied her mother. You're a housewife, and in your mind it's your mission. So open a company in the field of housekeeping. The clients will be endless. Do you know how many ladies in the city now who don't want to do anything but live in cleanliness and comfort? No, Mum, I'm not ready, and I'm not sure that I can handle it either. While you're hesitating, others will take all the positions available and make money instead of you. Look, your job is to open a business, find staff and organise their work, and I'll take care of the accounting and taxes. I did not work so many years as an accountant for nothing. 
the idea was good. Teresa was grateful to her mother for the offer, but it was difficult for her to dare to make such a serious change in her life. Teresa was pathologically afraid of change, and her husband's leaving was almost a tragedy for her. But week after week passed, and Teresa thought more and more about that idea. Why not? She had money and a desire to do good for people. She had a lot of spare time, which she spent on the misery of her past life with her husband. Eventually, Teresa was tired of her own helplessness and desperation, and she took a risk. She rented a small office on the outskirts of the city, bought cleaning products, mops, rags, and other cleaning tools, and hired several women. Teresa was surprised that after three months, her small and very modest company had already had at least 20 regular customers. She had to hire more staff, expand the range of services. The profits began to appear after a few months of hard work. Now, she had something to be proud of. From a simple maid who served her relatives, Teresa turned into a businesswoman who had a business she loved and her own money. As it turned out, being independent of her husband's income was much more pleasant than demanding on what and how her husband would decide on his finances. Even her children and parents began to treat her differently. One day, Fraser called and congratulated his ex-wife on the first six months since the opening of the business. Honestly, I didn't expect you to be so brave, he said, and Teresa only laughed. She had calmed down long ago after her husband left. I didn't expect so much courage from myself too, she replied. You can't imagine what it took for me to take the plunge. But now, six months later, I can thank you for forcing me to take the first serious step in my life. Teresa was grateful to her mother and even to her husband, who pushed her to make a serious change in her life. Soon, Teresa had an admirer, and two years later she married for the second time. Life was getting better, and all she had to do was take the first step.